welcome to the first in a series of five candidates forums being hosted by the Athens County League of Voters at the Athens Public Library. We're very pleased you are here. It's always a little confusing when you have commissioner candidates, when you have two separate races for commissioner candidates. You sort of have to keep in mind which one is which, but I'm sure you'll clear, get that in your mind because we have two of the candidates here. If you went to one of the forums in the spring, we had eight lined up, and that was, that was a little confusing. Uh, but we're very pleased you are here. I'm Ed Baum, and I'm the candidate forum coordinator, and if you have any, any questions or comments or suggestions for future forums, uh, please contact me. Most of you know how to get in touch with me if you don't see me at the end of tonight's meeting. I'm very pleased to have with us our legal and voters people who are helping with the forum. Dana Carlson is our timekeeper. I'll introduce him in a second. Uh, Debbie's meeting uh, it was one of the question reviewers, and you should have a piece of paper, and if you get carried away, we'll give you more paper. A uh, piece of paper in which you could write your questions. These are questions which should be able to be answered by both candidates. Uh, when you have your question written, just raise a hand, and uh, someone will come by and pick them up and bring them to the reviewers. Uh, their purpose is basically to make sure you have no what we call gotcha questions. You know, have you stopped eating your wife yet kind of questions. Um, or questions which have already been asked. So that elsewhere doesn't have to read it and say, oh, we've already answered that way. Go on to the next one. We do have a sponsor. We have two sponsors, actually. The Athens Public Library. Todd Best is over there. And he is our contact here. He does an excellent job for us. And then the League Win Voters and Debbie Schmini will say a word or two about one of our sponsors. Um, I'm Debbie Schmini, I'm the, uh, one of the co-presidents for the local league, and welcome. Thank you all for coming. You've made a good choice in terms of uh, educating yourself about uh, the candidates for the season. I want to tell you a little bit about the League of Voters. We're a nonpartisan organization uh, devoted to uh, bringing the citizens of the United States, it's a national organization, um, the best possible balanced information about uh, candidates and issues that we face in our upcoming elections. As such, this is a very, very busy month for us here locally. Um, we have, as Ed said, a whole series of uh, candidate and issue forums coming along. Um, you will also be seeing our highly visible and um, soon be famous, what are they wearing now? No, that was it. Um, our highly visible voter guide coming out in the, uh, in the uh, uh, Athens here as well as in uh, other places around town. Um, it will also direct you to the website, which has a uh, more extensive list of candidate responses that we can, we can fit into the, into the voter guide. We will also be uh, hosting mock elections in local, in local uh, middle and high school. Uh, so it's a busy season for now. In addition, um, beyond election season, uh, the league establishes uh, policy positions in the areas of uh, land resources, nat or natural resources, uh, social policy, governance, uh, education, and things like that. And these, these positions are created from the ground up. They're done by a consensus uh, process from the local leagues, uh, uh, feeding into the state board and then feeding into the national board. So we're very busy. Everything looks important as it is in terms of policy in our democracy. We would love to have um, Every single one of you join uh, a member of the league. Um, you can be as busy or not busy as you like, but it does matter when we are lobbying our legislature on positions of importance, when we are um, getting people out there to remind you about uh, voting rights and uh, voting requirements that we have um, feet on the ground. So um, these will be in the back. Um, please, please grab one and um, Learn whatever you feel like you need to know about the League of Voters and consider taking uh, our membership. Thank you. Thank you. Let me also point out in the back some information on voting and information on issue two, which has become a very hot issue uh, in the state. So I recommend that you pick that up, take a look at it. Early voting started this morning. I hope that all of you have not yet cast your ballots because that's why you're here this evening. <laughs> Uh, to find out the positions on issues which face our county by the two candidates. Now, I'd like to introduce our moderator for this evening. Well, I think he's becoming a permanent moderator, but elsewhere, Colton. Thank you, Ed. And welcome, everybody. 
Now, Ed's given me detailed instructions, and so shall we say I will more or less read them rather than just being off the cuff and getting fired at the end of the evening. And so, uh, welcome to this candidate forum, sponsored, as we said, by the Athens Public Library and the Athens County League of Women Voters. And this is for uh, County Commissioner. We have the two candidates, Charlie Atkins and Larry Payne. But here are our ground rules. Each candidate will have three minutes for an opening statement, and the order was determined by lot a few minutes ago, and Larry will speak first and Charlie second. And then when we get to the questions, why the first one, Larry will answer first, and then Charlie, and then we'll alternate on the evening. First, we'll have one question from each member of our panel, and let's just introduce them right now. From right to left, it's David DeWitt of the Athens News, Steve Robb of the Athens Messenger, and Alexander Zellner of the Post. And that's the order in which they will be questioning our candidates. And um, each candidate will have one and a half minutes then to answer the question. And um, then after we have had those three questions, we will invite questions from all of you, which go by way of your brain to a piece of paper to our screeners so we don't have five straight questions asking the same thing and so on. And besides, we're all human beings. It doesn't hurt to take a moment to try to clarify your thoughts and put it down in writing. OK, and then uh, if we have time at the end of the evening, we'll go back for another round from our members of the news media, but we'll determine that um, as things develop. So I welcome you and urge you to formulate some questions. And We'll get them over to our screeners here. Okay, um, it looks to me as though we're time for our opening statements. And so three minutes and a well, lot was cast. Larry Payne is first. I'd like to thank the league for the invitation to be here tonight for hosting this event. Four years ago when I was elected county commissioner, I pledged to be accessible and bring a fair, honest, and balanced approach to the office. I also pledged to make sure taxpayers' dollars were spent wisely I would represent all of Athens County. There's a brief background on myself and my family. I live in Albany. I've been there for 30 years and married and have four children. They've all graduated the Alexander School System. My wife, Sue, teaches part. It's not going out. Is it on? Okay. Uh, my wife, Sue, teaches part time at Howe University and is a volunteer for Habitat for Humanity. My oldest daughter was in the marching band in Alexander, graduated from Ohio University, and just recently graduated Capital Law School. Our second daughter played volleyball there and is employed in a daycare center and works extensively with a child with autism. Our youngest daughter attends ATCO and our son was on the varsity soccer team and played here in Athens with the Athens Youth Hockey Association. And I had the pleasure of coaching him and a number of other great kids from kindergarten through sixth grade. It was a fun experience. He now attends Ohio University and he's a combat engineer who uh, served in Afghanistan last year. Twice I was elected mayor of Albany and I can rate, relate to how hard it is for our townships and villages to operate in these lean times. I also worked for Columbia Gas for 18 years and have a unique knowledge of Athens County. Like hundreds of other Athens County residents over the last decade, I had a good job and lost it due to downsizing. That experience has enabled me as, co as commissioner to relate to many of our residents in this troubled time. I have 16 years of economic development experience, 12 of those with the Athens Area Chamber of Commerce. During that time, I worked with AceNet and their two incubators who served 31 full-time businesses with over 180 employees. I was a member of the Athens County Cooperative Extension Service for over 20 years and served for 10 years as board chair of ATCO. I was a vendor for 20 years at the farmer's market and also had the pleasure of being the president of the market for 10. And I'm proud to be a 30-year member of the Alexander Lions Club. I've served a number of leadership positions as a commissioner. I've been elected president and vice president twice by my fellow commissioners. I currently serve as vice president of the Economic Development Council, the Solid Waste District of Athens and Hawkin County, and of the five county Southeast Iowa Regional Jail. And I'm president of the Solid Waste District's Recycling Board. I'm proud to have led the effort to help create Athens County EMS, which is doing quite well. And I've been very supportive of our senior and community centers and veterans in the county. We were, one of our goals is to keep working for new jobs. We've had job growth with companies like Global Cooling, EdMap, and uh, SunPower. 
And one new source of jobs, we should have a company called CGI, who has promised to locate here for 150 jobs. And one area where my background helps is because I've worked with businesses like this in the past. Thank you. Charlie Atkins? Thank you. I also would like to thank the uh, League of Women Voters for having this event, the voters of Athens County, and my family, uh, which is very important to me. Um, I want to be your Athens County Commissioner. I can and will make a difference. Uh, I'll work every day uh, bringing smart growth, not just growth, to Athens County. I grew, I grew up here in Athens uh, and attended Athens High School. Uh, I attended classes at a high university. Uh, I attended over a hundred professional um, courses uh, throughout my career um, through Ohio University when I was the union president, Ohio Public Employees Retirement System. Um, I went to budget school, uh, investments, human resources, negotiations, and health care. I've been on the uh, Ohio Public Employees Retirement System for over 16 years. Uh, that system is about a $75 billion pension system, uh, and a lot of lives uh, throughout this state depend on what we do as a board. Uh, I also chaired that uh, health care committee uh, for our pension side of it. I can tell you the last two years as chair of that committee, uh, working with the legislators, which held up our bill for quite some time, it was costing a million dollars a day is what they cost us by not enacting the law that they just passed. And that was a, a, a Republican-controlled House, Senate, and of course the governor held that up. Uh, so I'm proud to be a Democrat and I'm proud to uh, what it means to be a Democrat and what we believe in. So I think it makes a difference on the local level um, whether or not uh, you support ideas of, of your party. Um, and I see time's about up. So anyway, my last term I'm going getting setting on, I was appointed by Richard Cordray, um, which was a treasurer of state at that time. Um, and my term will be up this January, and I doubt if uh, Josh Mandel reappoints me, uh, re uh, me to that board. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. And I guess I will say both of you started right out with a three-minute time limit. And you met it nicely. We love that. We're harsh on that. You're very cooperative. So now let's go to questions from the media. And Larry, you will address this one first. And we turn to David DeWitt of the Athens News. Thank you, Ellsworth. Um, last, uh, two years ago, when the last state budget was passed, it included a lot of cuts to local government funds, um, which Athens had to make cuts of their own, um, and this upcoming budget doesn't look as tight as the last one. My question is, are you going to advocate for the return of any of those local government funds, or are you satisfied with the current budget levels as far as local government money from the state goes? Well, we're definitely advocating for the continuation of the local government fund, but most of the information that our Commissioner Association has received is that the state's going to phase that out. So uh, we'll have to accept that in our budget and act accordingly. Uh, we'll have better figures in the fall from our budget commission where we are, but right now we hope to be in a you know, position when some of the casino money will be coming in more, that at least the hope is that we'll be where we are and, and can provide the essential services that we've been able to do the last couple of years, even though it's been very you know, difficult. Charlie? Um, 
we're going to get cut again. There's no doubt. It's in this budget. Uh, and my, my belief is the commissioner, me, and I'm talking tonight about me. I'm not talking about any other commissioner. If, if I was in the office, I believe that I would be going to Columbus. I would be meeting with people. I'd be bringing awareness to the county, to the residents of the county, and other counties to try to form some kind of coalition that would put more pressure on the state government than what's been put on the state government. Right now, the state government is, is cutting the local government, and, and I don't hear anything uh, from people um, saying what they would do to, you know, to try to improve it. I, I definitely believe that we got to put more pressure on uh, the government, the, you know, the governor, the governor's office, and people, especially down in southeastern Ohio, where, you know, we don't have what they have up north. So I'd be advocating for more here in Athens County. Thank you. And I guess I'm, the candidates you know it goes for one and a half minute time limits on those and heads forth till we get to the closing statement, one and a half. And so now the next question will, will uh, be answered first by Charlie and for that we turn to Steve Robb of the Athens Messenger. Could you just talk for a minute about what your priorities will be if you're elected? My priorities will be, one, to get in office and try to look at the budget to see where we can gain. Uh, I do believe that, for instance, we have facilities here in Athens County, I've said that back in the primary, that have not been used to its fullest. And I think what we need to look at, if we got uh, uh, Jobs and Family Services, for instance, has got three or four buildings around. They've had layoffs, they've had cutbacks, and they're still in them facilities. I think we need to look at the facilities. We need to move people around um, and move people in some of these uh, buildings and, and, and fill them buildings up because if we're paying electric and fuel and gas and, and the utilities and the upkeeps of this, and then we need to kind of look to see if uh, if we still need to keep them facilities, uh, or can we lease them, rent them, uh, to see what we can do there. Thank you, Larry. My priorities would be a number of areas. One major focus would be on jobs because that's the only way we're going to sustain to be able to get out of relying so much on the state. And uh, like I mentioned, we've spent almost two years working with this company, DHI. And if they come, which we hope to hear in the next couple of weeks, it will be 150 new jobs, which would be great. Uh, but keeping the budget balanced and providing essential services is also a top priority. Uh, and responding to the facilities, we've already looked into that uh, months and months ago. I've talked to Jack Freck, and we've had appraisals on those buildings. And we're waiting for after the election to whoever the one commissioner, hopefully only one new commissioner. and all the office holders and department heads are going to sit down and do a strategic plan. That's something I've been advocating for the last couple of years. But to our bonds, our uh, paid off at the end of this year, we didn't have any money to look for expansion. So uh, at the end of this year and the beginning of next, we will do that. We will be looking at the facilities and see where we can move people around. And we've been doing that for the last couple of months. Thank you, Larry. So now for a third question, Larry, you will answer it first, and Alexander Zelder of the Post. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I just have a question about fracking. Um, I understand it's been an issue in Athens County for a, a while now. Um, so I was just wondering if you were planning on implementing any rules and regulations about it to uh, decrease Athens County. Well, as we've talked about before, there are meetings. Fracking, the drilling is regulated entirely by the state. What we've tried to do in Athens County is take an aggressive approach and a bipartisan approach. What I mean by that is people for and against drilling. And we have a committee that has met, and they've done a great job of coming up with recommendations uh, for the commissioners that we passed on to the state of Ohio. We have passed a road use maintenance agreement, and we're going to uh, be fine-tuning that more. Um, so those are some of the things that we've done. 
with that and we've also called for a public hearing uh, for an injection well that some people have had some concerns with in the area and we're waiting to hear back from the state so we've been aggressive on that approach yeah and since I was short last time and I'll try to make it up this time jobs is there for me the EMS system I think is very important the 911 system I think there's things we can do there and of course law we got a lot of issues in this county and we need to support uh, the sheriff department uh, fracking I think tomorrow that if I was a commissioner I'd be in the in the office of the uh, prosecutor asking to get injunction against any well uh, injection well in this county where they're coming in from out of state dumping who knows what no one knows you're not allowed to know to see if we can get an injunction to stop this dumping into these wells um, and to try to find out uh, what's going in these wells I don't believe brine the salt, salt water a lot of these trucks are coming out of town I've talked to people in the industry right here in the county that also believes they got some real issues and would like to uh, make sure they know what's going into these wells so in, in them discussions I think tomorrow we ought to be right there trying to get the uh, prosecutor to file an injunction to stop any more dumping in in this county uh, in court thank you Charlie and now we will turn the questions from the audience and Charlie you're on first how do you or how would you deal with passionate disagreements with other commissioners? Passionate disagreements with other commissioners. I'll deal with them. <laughs> well, I believe that uh, uh, all my life I've dealt with negotiations, fact finding, uh, and I've been in tough negotiations. It's like the health care that I just went through for two years. Uh, if, if you would call the director of uh, OPERS and say, how did that get done? It's, it's my ability to lead, to convince people that we need to uh, come up with a solution before someone else comes up with it. You know, I've dealt with that for 20 years at Ohio University. I've dealt with that 16 years at OPERS. I was a firefighter, so we had them issues out there. So I think I just have the ability to sit down with people and say, hey, we, we, we got to make this decision. We can, we can come up with a better product than letting the EPA or the governor or someone from outside our community. So I think I got a, a, a compassion to work and to be with people to to change their minds so uh, anyone who knows me uh, you know would would say that thank you Larry I think anyone who knows me knows that for all my time at the chamber and then here as commissioner one of my strengths is working with people uh, one of my fellow commissioners just walked in and there are times we disagree but as the question stated how do we deal with that there's times where we agree there's times where maybe we will strongly disagree like I think the question was but the main thing is you have to have mutual respect for each other and our other office holders and we may have a disagreement and we try to work on a compromise that's like with fracking what we did is we came up with a commission of people on both sides so because it was very controversial we had a lot of yelling and uh, people upset in the room so we said hey let's sit down and have people talk and try to work on a positive nature and I, that committee has done a great job and it has some recommendations that will be coming out in the next month or so but the way I look at it is we talk we disagree and we move on to the next question and start all over again fresh thank you okay we're ready for the next question and let's see this will be you first Larry okay. uh, how have you furthered diversity in your work and your community further diversity in your work and your community well, I think with diversity, if uh, we're talking about special needs or you know, other things, uh, one thing that I've focused on because I have a child with a disability is to uh, is to visit in, in uh, with ACO and Beacon School 
and make sure that we're helping provide their service. Now, they have an independent board. We just pass the levy money through them. But that's uh, one area we've tried to include more people. One thing when I was at the Chamber of Commerce uh, with Personnel Plus, we have placed a number of people with disabilities in the community and the workforce, and uh, especially at High University. And what is good about this is it gives our people who work at ACO meaningful jobs, but it has also helped the people where they work. I've been told numerous times by managers at High University that when a person from ACO comes and works in one of their departments, that it raises the predicti productivity level of the other people and they enjoy working because our people come to work happy and it gives them self-esteem and it uh, really has made an influence on their fellow workers. Thank you, Larry. Charlie? Thank you. As president of High University, I, I represent a group of people doing our work. But I thought it was very important when the university and I sat down to, to talk about folks from APCO. And we got people during my administration that works in our dining halls, that works beside our people. And so I had to make sure our people accepted that, which they did. So that's one thing that, that I directly done. The other thing during my career at High University, I created a friendship program with some other folks. This allowed females and minorities to have the opportunity to be in the male traditional positions, which is the higher paid positions within the, my bargain unit. So we was able to get females in a high university, got more females and minorities in, in the craft shops than ever before. Um, the other thing is I was the one that signed the uh, same uh, sex partner benefit at a high university. So I believe in people. I believe in all people are equal and uh, that I'll work every day in the county commissioner's office to make sure all people in Athens County, um, regardless of race, creed, color, uh, have a, a great opportunity here in this, here in this county. Thank you. Here's our next question, and Charlie, you will address it first. What are your views about extending public transportation throughout the county? And how would you support this extending public transportation throughout the county? Well, I would love to see that happen because I do believe we have people out in the county that don't have uh, the means to get to town, uh, the means to you get to doctor's appointments and stuff. Under this economy in Athens County, I'm not for sure that I got any magic answer on how to come up with, with that kind of uh, money. Um, so, you know, in good times or in better times, I would be for a, uh, looking at that um, a little stronger. Um, but in the meantime, I just don't see that we can um, have the money to, you know, to be putting into uh, in that area. Thank you. Larry? Uh, we actually have already been dealing with that. Uh, the county through HAPCAP has received funding for buses and uh, Lance Rep is the county transportation coordinator and is in the process of getting vans to make a set more things accessible out in the county. So that has already been dealt with and will be dealt with in the future and there's been funding for the next several years for that. Okay, thank you. So we'll go to the next question and Larry, you're first on this. Is this acting right? Can you hear it properly? I hope so. I'm a user, not a technician. Uh, I had to turn it up. Okay, uh, let's see. Larry, you're on for this one. What do you propose to do to create jobs in our county? Well, jobs is one area I focused on for a number of years uh, with my time at the Chamber of Commerce and then as commissioner. And our strategy through our Economic Development Council has been to work to retain and expand jobs in our county because every county in the state and then in the country is competing for new jobs. And Global Cooling uh, is in the process. They've already pledged to hire 70 new jobs in the next couple of years. And as I mentioned briefly in the beginning, we've had companies like EdMap, Third Sun, a number of other companies expand. EdMap uh, is over 100 employees now, and they're looking at a further expansion. 
So our best bet has been working with local companies, but we also look at attracting companies where we can. Uh, as I mentioned, the CGI took two years of negotiation, and that's where one of my strengths is because I can talk to the businesses and speak to them what it's like to work with the business in Athens County because that's been one of my major focuses for the last 16 years. So I can talk to the business owners or managers and talk to them how businesses are successful here in the county. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. I would try to work very close with the Economic Development Council uh, to my understanding, talking to some small businesses around Athens County, there's a lot of paperwork and there's a lot of uh, hoops and to jump over and so some of them don't take advantage of that. I would try to see if there's an easier way or, or a way that folks could uh, be helped uh, with all the paperwork and the red tape that they may have to go through. The internet, broad-based internet systems coming to southeast Ohio to this region. I would try to be uh, looking at um, improving that and finding companies that would come to Athens, Ohio, because um, uh, I think that broad-based internet system would um, um, really benefit the county. Um, you know, there again, I would be out working, calling. I know folks uh, from where I sit on the PERS board uh, throughout the state. Um, that I'd call upon and say, hey, we need some help down here. Where can you help us? Are they businesses that I need to help contact or put in uh, contact to the uh, Athens Economic Development Council? But I would be sitting there trying to be a partner with that. Once again, I think as a commissioner, although that's their, their work, we need to be there with them. Thank you. Okay, uh, this one, Charlie, you'll address it first. To what extent would you support the implementation of a mandatory spay-neuter policy program at the Athens County Dog Shelter? That is, one by which all dogs who were adopted would be required to be spayed or neutered. I think that's very important. I think we just have way too many uh, cats, dogs in this county. Um, I would support that. I would work to try to bring the funding in if we didn't have the funding to allow an animal that comes into our shelter that has already been given away, throwed away, uh, and not take care of them needs, uh, I just think is wrong. So I would support um, making sure any animal coming to our shelter uh, was neutered, spayed, Thank you. Larry? Uh, this is one thing that we have been talking about for a long time. And yes, it would be a program that I could support if we could figure out how we would do it. Uh, the dog shelter does not receive any general funds, so this would have to be a program that we could pay for itself. Uh, the Friends of the Shelter have been doing an excellent job of working with uh, the dog shelter on this, and uh, this is one of the problems that we have. Uh, we can deal with dogs. And when people could talk about cats, but that's a humane issue. One thing that when you're a county commissioner, one of the things you learn is you can only do what's in the high revised code. We cannot do a cat shelter. As worthy as it is, we are not, we are not allowed to do that. Um, unfortunately, that's what the Humane Society does. But we can focus on the dog shelter and, and uh, mandatory West Spain is something we really need to try to implement in the future. Thank you. Well, we have no more questions from the audience at the moment, but I must say that struck me as a fine packet. I think we'll turn back to the news media, and I'm filibustering a moment so that David DeWitt is going to be called upon first as a chance to um, um, reach into his pocket and get out that question. So, David? Thanks, Ellsworth. Um, my question is about strategic partnerships. I guess for Larry, what strategic partnerships have you sought out and uh, developed during your time in office? And for Charlie, what strategic partnerships in the county would you seek out uh, if you were to be elected? Well, partnerships where we could do those or would be to work with other government entities as we do 
uh, with the solid waste district, we are in partnership with Hawking County. Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of those, but also, on the other hand, there are private-public uh, partnerships we can do. Now, this wasn't when I was commissioner, but with the Chamber of Commerce, the downtown project, where we buried all the overhead lines, planted trees uptown, and totally changed the landscape of the downtown, was a private-public partnership. Another example we're look, working on right now is we are trying to work with the city to do a joint city-county sewer project. It would be a project for sewage out in the county, but with the treatment plant, would we would be utilizing Athens, and this could be a win-win for both because it would, there would be money to go to Athens to help improve their infrastructure that they need, and uh, would save the residents uh, money, so there would have to be a second plant which is frowned on by the EPA. One, one thing driving us is the EPA does not want us to build a plant. So this is where we have had public-private, we've had partnerships, and we will continue to keep working together to try to make government, especially in Athens County, <coughs> run as smooth and efficiently as we can. Thank you. And Charlie? I, I think Burr Oak's one place that I think that we need to spend a lot of time and effort uh, I believe that, you know, it's on its way um, to be uh, brought back into some kind of uh, use. Um, but I, I think that there's an opportunity, a tourism opportunity up in the northern end, up in that area, to work with uh, a, the private and um, public partnerships to develop uh, that facility up there. You know, I like to see, uh, you know, um, uh, trails put in that, uh, whether it be four-wheeler trails, and I know we need to look at the environmental um, environment uh, issues and stuff like that, but zip lines and something that would bring in monies and opportunity up in that area. The solid waste, my understanding, um, uh, there's programs right now that they'll come in and do the, the cardboard and, and, and the solid waste district can I think be something that can 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 uh, really grow and be vital and help Athens County. So I would work um, in them areas. I'd work with ASNAP and and other groups to try to also uh, look at what we can bring in the area. Do I have time out? No, you're, you're, you're just oh, okay. You have like Oh, okay. And, and I'd work with a high university. There's a lot of camps and, and, and stuff like that we can bring into Athens County in the summer. Thanks. Thank you. And Larry, wait a minute. Wait, that was the second answer to that, wasn't it? We have two more questions from the audience. So let's let um, Steve and Alexander cool their heels for a moment. And let's see. This will be... You first, then, right, Charlie? Just to yes. keep it straight, because I'm keeping myself straight. That's what we're doing. Okay. How will you protect our environment with respect to gas well and injection well activity? I think I talked about that a little bit earlier. I think immediately we need to do everything we can to stop any more chemicals, any more trucks coming into Athens County, dumping in these wells. We have no clue what's in them. It's, we know it's really not brine water, salt water. So um, I, I think that's the first thing we need to do tomorrow morning is see if there's any way uh, that we can get an injunction filed to stop any more dumping of uh, this waste in Athens County. Also, I've talked to some of the folks who, drillers and who, who wants this uh, uh, and I think they're willing to work with us. Once again, I know they got this committee going, um, but I believe in landowners' rights. But I, so I believe in people should be able to get their their uh, gravel and oil and sand or whatever. But I think the neighbors deserve to have clean air, clean water, and I think the other thing we need to really work on getting. Um, the language changed, uh, really fight uh, as a county to, to go to Columbus to get the Clean Air and Water Act back into the bills that 
that will save our children or our future in this county. Thank you, Larry. Well, we've been working on uh, that issue, like I said earlier, with our committee. They've done an excellent job of bringing a balance of both sides together for recommendations of what can be proposed to the state. Again, until you're in office, you don't realize that there's only so many things you can do as county commissioner. And what we try to do is work within the limits of law and lobby where we can. Uh, we do work with the state of Ohio, and we do try to talk to the you know, EPA on these items. We have called for a public hearing in Athens. Those are the things that we're legally allowed to do, and we have done that, and uh, we will continue to do everything we can on the county level to make sure that if, uh, especially with these injection well permits, that they're investigated and what goes in those is just, just the items that are supposed to go in those. Thank you. Let's go to the next question here from the audience. And basically this says presuming, and Larry, you'll be first on this, presuming that you are elected, what will Athens County look like at the end of your four-year term? Well, I hope after the next four years, that if I'm elected, uh, we'll be able to turn the economy around at least on our local level by focusing with our businesses here. Uh, if the budget situation is better, I think you're going to see uh, a dramatic change of what the county is going to look like. Uh, there's either going to be a, reconfig a reconfiguration of the buildings we have, possibly some new buildings, and but what that needs to be done is in a strategic, strategic plan where we all work together. And that's something I've called for, like I mentioned, for three years now. But we haven't been able to do that until the bonds are paid off. And once those are paid off, um, we, our goal is to have that strategic plan and, and see where we're going so we don't just stick a building here and find out two years later, oh, if we would have moved it over in the other part of the county, it would have been more ideal. So if we move the sheriff's office, if it's 911, EMA, EMS, whatever we do, move those items around, we need to do it in a plan, orderly fashion, so we're putting, we're putting the taxpayers' money uh, to, so that's spent wisely and efficient, so efficiently so we can get those offices where they should be out accessible to the public. Thank you. Charlie? That's a tough one, four years out. Um, we'd be in a new 911 center because there's money there in the budget, it's been there in the budget, that would uh, serve our volunteer firefighters, our emergency medical people, our sheriff department in a better way. Uh, they're still, after all these uh, times, uh, years going by, that there's still struggles there. Uh, and one of the problems is, is where some of this stuff is located. I can see the sheriff department moved out of the downtown area somewhere where it would be more successful uh, uh, operation for, for deputies to be able to get out into the county to do their job, that um, um, the county would be um, um, clear of any uh, uh, wells that the pollutant our, our uh, place or uh, where we live and and better sewer lines or better uh, going out towards the Albany area uh, as long as it's affordable I think that's what we need to be doing thank you well let's turn to Steve Rob for a question Steve both touched on the Route 50 sanitary sewer project um, the homeowners out there are going to be asked to help pay for that through their monthly sewer bills is there a point at which you think that project will become will become too expensive uh, to go forward with and what point would that be in terms of a monthly bill well right now well, I am my turn is now sort of there is a Charlie's it's fine, but you can go. Oh, go ahead. I want you to go first. <laughs> uh, pardon me. Pardon me. <laughs> go ahead. Um, uh, I have talked to some folks out in that area, and uh, there's a number of people that do believe that the cost of it, what they're hearing, will be something they can't afford. Um, unless it's mandated by the EPA that we do something, 
uh, that is um, beyond. I could not support something that put a burden on people that they couldn't afford their sewer and their system, and and they they lose their home or they they go without uh, prescription drugs because they gotta worry about the sewer bill. So, yeah, I think they are a point, and what that would be, I have no clue. Some people right now can't afford another $200 a month. They don't have it. And so I think that we just need to survey them, uh, have discussions with them, see what, what they believe is affordable, uh, because I don't know what, you know, what them folks can, uh, can afford or can't afford but bottom line is before I would support uh, that it has to be affordable and we sure wouldn't want people to lose their homes uh, or go without other real needed items uh, for a sewer system I think it we need it but stop you need a stop instead of time okay what we're doing on this project is doing our due diligence. Uh, there have been a number of sewer systems in that area that have failed, and the EPA, EPA is obviously aware of that. What we're trying to do is see if a project can be worked out with the city of Athens. Our second option is to go to the plains. The third option is to build a plant. But like I mentioned, both of those are very expensive, and the EPA does not want us to build a plant. All of this is so when we go to the residents of that area, is we can say, this are our options and say this is the area that it looks like it's going to be whether it's 45 50 dollars uh, I think that nobody wants to make it come in at a price that will be unaffordable for people um, but it's also a safety issue that we have to look at in public health but the thing is the people will be asked and let us know and also we may not even get to that point if we uh, don't reach negotiations with the city that are fruitful, uh, the project probably will just go back on the back burner again because uh, that's the only way we can afford it. But what we're trying to do, like I said, is we want to get the proper information uh, so that people will have something to, to judge on. But what's going to happen down the road, eventually the EPA will mandate it, and the problem is it could be a lot, a lot higher. Thank you. Well, Alexander, let's go to your question, please. And let's see, Larry, you'll be first on this one. Okay. Um, I just had one more question about job growth, which I'm pretty sure you touched on before. But uh, I was hoping you could maybe focus it on the students. If that may be a little more related. Um, Should he have the microphone? Oh, uh, yeah. I was just wondering how uh, um, you were planning on if you were implementing anything new uh, for job growth among students in Athens. I know there's a lot of that at the university, but um, if you were planning anything about that. Well, actually. A lot of the things that we've done in the past, small business growth, it has provided jobs for students. Um, most of our business in the area do hire students. Um, specifically, the company that we've been talking about, CGI, if they do come, one of the things that attracted them to Athens and our selling point to the company was Ohio University and Hawking College. They do want to hire from that student base. So these would be very attractive jobs. Uh, salary-wise, benefit-wise, uh, there could be a, a direct benefit to keep students in the area. And we have a number of our own local people. Like I said, I have four children. Two of them are in other counties right now because of the job situations. And we want to make it more affordable where they can live here and find jobs. And it's companies like CGI, EdMap, and other ones that are going to provide the jobs to keep our young people in the county because that's our future. Thank you. Charlie? And you know, I agree with Larry on on some of these companies that's coming in, and the different uh, uh, local businesses that hire students now. I I think a couple of things we can be doing that would help students and our community uh, is bring a lot more uh, functions back into Athens County. At one time, uh, Ohio University used to have uh, uh, a number of um, uh, camps and uh, uh, camps and uh, programs that they needed additional people to to work, and so I would work to support uh, 
not only a high university bringing in more camps and, and, and conferences, but Hocking Tech, which they have a facility. Same thing with Burr Oak, if we can uh, uh, grow that a little bit, I think it'd be some employment, part-time employment for students. Thank you. Okay, here's a couple more from the audience, and um, let's see. Charlie, you'll be first on this one. Would you consider development on the south end of our county, namely Hockingport, as a resort area? Would you consider development Hockingport as a resort area? Uh, yeah, I, I think any time that we can um, um, look at projects like that. Let me bring something a little closer. A number of years, a high university president talked about putting a dam down, down the Hocking River. And a lot of people laughed and thought it was some big, uh, um, almost uh, a wild dream. But could you actually imagine a, a portable dam just when the floods come, you get closed? What this river between White's Mill and Isle of Athens County could be instead of being a bunch of, of wood floating down there and a, the river about half uh, full of, uh, about the canoeing and the people could spend uh, a lot of good time on this part of the river and it could go right on down towards Hockingport. So I think we have a real opportunity on the river down there to develop it, to bring in more tourism and more uh, folks um, that would put some small businesses in that area. So I would support any growth like that and work uh, the best I can to, to see that happen. So sometimes these dreams or these thoughts that people have, and some of us uh, thinks crazy is not that crazy when, when, you, when you get back and you look at it. So Thank you. Larry? Yes, I would be supportive of working with local businesses that or developers that wanted to do that in that Hockingport. Uh, I get out in the county and go around. I was in Hockingport Friday night at the old Ketchum's campground. There were five people from Athens County. Everybody else there was from Logan, Lancaster, Fairfield <coughs> County, some from Delaware. So we are already bringing tourists in there. Now, if the question was to build maybe a, a more uh, affluent type resort, a high priced resort, uh, that couldn't be built in the lower areas. If somebody wanted to develop up on one of the ridges uh, a resort where people could go down and still use the river, well, definitely we would support that. Anything that would bring jobs and bring people in the county. But Hockingport already is a destination for people from outside our county, and it was packed down there. Thank you. This next question is from the same person, and so that person asked about the specific hopping port and recreation. Secondly, and Larry, you're first on this one, what kind of jobs do you feel Athens County needs? The kind of jobs we need are a mixture. Uh, right now, our economy is sector-based around the university and Hawking College, and that's great. Over the years, that's helped us from the peaks and valleys. Uh, and that is important to us with the government jobs. But we need to diversify and have more private businesses. And that's where the Ed Maps, the, C the CGIs, the Third Sons, all those type of companies, um, we need those and more because we need to focus on diversifying our economy in this county and getting light manufacturing in and more entrepreneurship from local businesses. Um, there's talk about uh, with the solid waste district with you know, the proposed MRF that this cr could create jobs for people in wood and other entrepreneurs, Ace Nets looking into that. So those are the type of jobs that we need is diversification. Thank you. Charlie? Yeah, I, as I talked about earlier, I think it's broad-based internet coming to Athens County could be something we could be hitting on, that we could look at businesses that don't come here because they don't have them capabilities. I think that's some smart growth. Um, I also um, think that the solid waste uh, and the cardboard and the, the, the plastics that we're not uh, using, we're not, uh, we're thrown in the landfill. I think there's jobs right there. One of the conferences uh, recently that held at OUN, 
Uh, the guy says, we, we can bring good paying jobs into Athens County. We're ready. We got the way to do that. So I think we need to connect with them people a little stronger, uh, knock on their door, go see them. I don't believe a county commissioner's job is only to sit in the office to wait for the uh, Athens County um, um, business folks, economic develop, to do everything on their own. So I think the commissioners need to, at least I believe that I would be uh, out there trying to get these people to come to Athens County. And, and I think our diverse county will attract people because people like diversity and we sure have diversity in Adams County and we need to keep it. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, and uh, Charlie, you'll address this next one first. This is, do you support the right to bargain collectively? And in parentheses, did you support Senate Bill 5? Uh, yeah, that's my life. Um, uh, you know, I... I um, there's no question about that. What scares me now is um, the right to work law that, that some people in Columbus, the same group of people, the same Republican and uh, group of people are trying to um, get this right to work here in Ohio. That is worse than this Senate Bill 5 ever was. It will absolutely destroy um, the rights of people, uh, w women, it, it brings in lower wages. So, you know, I, I've done this all my life. So um, I was out front with that. I didn't, you know, I know some people thought that there was a lot of good stuff in that. And I can tell you right now, anyone that thought there was a lot of good stuff didn't read what I read. So. Okay, I think my position was clear on that. I stated many times that I support the right of people to bargain. All three commissioners sent a letter that we said that Senate Bill 5 for Athens County was not in the best interest because the vast majority of our workers are government workers. Thank you. Okay, here's another one from the audience. Larry, you address this first. Many who work with young people today say there is an epidemic in Athens County of abuse and addiction to alcohol and drugs. Do you have ideas for treating this problem beyond the court system? Well, that's definitely a complicated I issue. Uh, I know the sheriff has a program of education and treatment and you know, law enforcement, but a lot there's things that are not under the jurisdiction of the commissioners. That's where health recovery and other local entities um, are, the serve, are the agencies to deal with drug issues, and we have advocated from the commissioners many times for grants to help get more funding for jobs or for uh, health recovery because uh, the warden at the jail has said it's just like a vicious cycle. There's three or four hundred people who just rotate in and out of the jail, come back, depend on drugs again. So until those people can uh, be treated properly and be able to kick their habits, uh, it's only going to be more work for the law enforcement people and it's just going to cost us more money in the long run. So treatment is definitely an option that needs to be looked at, and we need more state funding for that. Thank you. Charlie? Yeah, I, I, I think that we need to work within the schools a little better. I know Pat and, and his their group is, uh, is the best, bar none, uh, and the work and the kids I get to talk to. But I think we've got to have more community uh, things for our kids more um, you know uh, I went to um, the Papa festival and that was a great environment for kids and you didn't see you seen kids but you didn't see the kids that really needed to be there to see how things was done and how things was made and how people acted so I think we need to encourage we us we need to encourage schools we need to work with the schools. We need to work with Pat and his group of people to try to get kids to more of these functions um, that they can communicate with one another. Uh, you know, when I went to school, we had dances, and you, you very seldom hear about school dances anymore, and parents are not involved. So I, I think we need to really work as a community um, uh, and 
bring get some programs and encourage kids to go to some of these uh, uh, little programs uh, just like I said uh, earlier where they can be together and do things together thank you well I think it's time for our closing statements and so again the order for these was uh, by lot earlier in the evening and these are two minute statements and Charlie will give the first one and then Larry will give his closing statement second so for two minutes for each uh, Charlie your closing statement all right thank you you know as I said earlier on my work experience my compassion to serve people my ability to work uh, with people to resolve uh, issues, complex issues, whether it be in the, uh, with the budget or, or the fracking or, or the friends of the dog shelter or wherever it may be, I think I have ability to bring something different, something different to the Athens County Commissioner's Office. Um, when I first got involved in my union, uh, I, I attended a convention and at the convention back in, in 1985 or so, uh, one of the issues on the floor was people about uh, uh, gay rights. And that convention changed who I was. It made me realize that I, if I was going to stay in the labor movement, I had to represent all people. And that's what I've done in my entire life. I got ability to change things to help change things, and uh, as a commissioner, I will do that. Um, I think it's. I think we have difference. Uh, I've seen an article in the Athens News that says it doesn't matter on the local politics whether you're a Democrat or Republican. It matters. When the county engineers uh, went after a contract, it mattered when they went to the commissioner's office how that vote went down on the solid waste. Once again, when them guys paid more for their health care uh, and got higher wages, they wanted lower health care rates, and, um, and, and that didn't occur. So it does make a difference on the local level because Jimmy Stewart started right here in the city of Athens as a treasurer, and look what he done to working people in the state of Ohio. I would totally disagree with that statement. On the local level, you need to be concerned with activities in the county. It's not a Republican or Democrat issue. All the office holders have to work together. It helps to have a balance, and that's one thing I feel that I brought to the office is a fair, honest, balanced approach. And I've had countless people around the county say that I've lived up to what I said when I first started. Um, a commissioner has to be visible. We don't just sit in the office. But you have to be there sometimes to answer the phones because people do call and expect you know somebody to get back with them and we have numerous <laughs> committees that we're required to attend but i constantly visit out in the county and uh, one of the areas that i visited was up in the borough area and i led the effort part of the effort from athens county as because of having diversification in the county i was able to talk to the state leaders about baroque and they did listen and then with joint efforts from Morgan County, and we were able to get that park reopened, and that was with bipartisan support. But if I was reelected, I will continue to be a visible commissioner. During the last four years, I've been very accessible to our residents, the media, and regularly appeared on local radio shows, a viewpoint and party line to inform the residents about county issues and to answer their questions. I believe besides being a leader, a commissioner has to be a we person. You need to be able to get along with the other office holders, agency directors, county employees, and be willing to listen to the county residents. I have a strong proven record doing that. Four years ago, when I received the endorsement of one of the local newspapers, they said, Larry Payne understands the role of the Office of the County Commissioner and offers important experience in the areas of economic development. They also stated my insight would be thoughtful, well-researched, and I would work with other office holders in a respectful and a shared spirit of cooperation. I hope you agree that I've done that and more, and will consider voting for me on November 6th. Thank you. Thank you both. Ed Baum would like the floor for a moment. Since he's running this show, he gets the floor. I just want to thank all of you for coming. I hope you have learned something this evening about the candidates. 
I remind you that there is a forum on Thursday night. We haven't had one on Thursday night for a long time. It is for the Athens County Treasurer between A. Ellisoff and Bill Bias. Please come. And in order that the people who come to listen to those people may have something to write, please leave the pencils in the chairs as you leave.